Bona Asa Fiwe. This is Pastor Verl Howard. And guess what? You're watching North Carolina Backstage with my friend, Gary Clement. <laughs> Gary C. Clement presents North Carolina Backstage. Sometimes I often My name is Gary C. Clement and welcome to North Carolina Backstage. Today as guest on our show, we have Pastor Verl Howard of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Also, Mr. Steve Gregory and the Remission Heirs of Roxboro, North Carolina, and a special interview segment with Reverend Clifton Davis of the hit show, Amen. Well, up first this week, we have an interview with Pastor Verl Howard out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. She's not only a pastor, she's also a concert promoter, uh, manager of national recording artists such as Diedrich Haddon, and recently she added the title of author to her portfolio. The name of her book is God is My Ticket Out of the Ghetto. How are you? I'm wonderful and excited to be here in Chapel Hill. Okay, great. So just, you know, tell me a little bit now about your background and, you know, some of the things you've done thus far in your career. Wow. Well, you know, I'm a manager of National Recording Gospel Artists. Um, but what a lot of people don't know about me, Gary, is I'm actually educated. I went to school. <laughs> I went to school and got my uh, master's degree in business administration supervision, and I have a doctorate in ministry and my undergrad in biology with an emphasis in chemistry. At one point, I was studying to be an eye doctor, but now the Lord has switched things around, and I'm in ministry full time with respect to music and the church. Okay, cool, cool. I understand you have a new book and stuff out now. Just what's the name of the book, and you know, just tell us a little bit about this book, please. Gary, can I be real with you? We're going to have a good time in this interview. The book is called God is My Ticket Out the Ghetto. And it's about having a ghetto mentality, a restricted mindset. When you define the word ghetto, the word ghetto is pertaining to a culture or a race that was bound in a community or a section. And it started out as a Yiddish word where the Jews were bound by the Germans. And then over the years, African Americans tried to take the word and own it. And so God told me that at times we as Christians have a tendency to have a sectional mindset with respect to the things of God. So he told me to write this book because I, too, have been guilty of that, Gary. God say, I'm going to do this. And I was like, nah, God, I start doubting. God say, I'm going to heal you. I'm like, really? Am I healed? So he told me to write this book. Interesting. Okay, cool. So as far as, you know, uh, any, you know, uh, well-known people thus far have endorsed your book for you? Uh, mm -hmm. What's what's happening exactly? Well, the most important well-known person is Jesus. But God has blessed me to be able recently to go on TBN. And I had people like Clifton Davis, who you know from Amen, who interviewed me. And he just sanctioned it, as well as the producers of TBN. I've had artists read the book. I mean, Dietrich called me up. He was like, you go. And, you know, I've had other artists say, this is awesome. A matter of fact, uh, Crystal Akins, she purchased a book from me. She sold into the ministry. And, I mean, that just made me so excited. And, of course, we know Crystal Akins. And um, she just gave me kudos. And, and Cynthia Jones, my baby, she's always calling me and encouraging me with respect back to the book. Okay, cool, cool. So as far as, you know, the industry is concerned, right now there are a lot of things going on in the yeah. sense of the internet just basically taking over things. How do you feel about this new technology and how everything is being reshaped with the industry? What industry are we talking about? The gospel industry or just the industry or society as a whole? Because that makes a difference. If we're talking about the gospel industry, if a person is an aspiring gospel artist, then they better understand how it works. Because Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, Linked, Reverb Nation, all these different networks can be a great marketing tool or publicity tool to get that artist out there. And it allows the independent artist to be able to establish a fan base and not even have an album or, you know, or a CD that's on any type of wax or plastic or whatever you want to call it. So I would say it has its advantages, but at the same token, on the flip side, there's disadvantages because you have people abusing and misusing the technology. 
technology. You have people who are downloading the CDs and the music, which hurts my pocket. It hurts the artist's pocket. It hurts the record industry's pocket. People who download even video clips. You and I know that. Folk will go on YouTube and download what they want and then make a movie out of it. So it depends on how you're utilizing this technology with respect to the gifting and what God has called you to do for kingdom business. I see. I see. Cool. So as far as, you know, just feeling challenged with all the various hats you have to wear as a manager, as well as, you know, these other things that you do preaching and all this, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, balance balance all this? Yes. Prayer. I try to tell people my time does not belong to me, Gary. I really get up every morning. I have communion because the Bible says as oft as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And as the Lord leads me, I'll do that. And I'll just ask God, orchestrate my steps. I mean, there are some times where I have to go on lockdown. I can't even answer the phone. And I have to trust that because when you manage artists and artists are expecting you to deliver, they're expecting to have booking dates. They're expecting to be sent out and they want to go out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, I have to really trust God and say, God, you open up the doors. And sometimes it means just laying before him, shutting down my phone. But then when I come out that prayer mode that he puts me in, then I'll get a phone call. So I have to balance my time. Then with respect to the church, you know, I have to be there for the people of God. But they can't call me 24 hours around the clock and try to kill me, Gary, because you have some that want to call you all night, all day, all morning, and they're not sensitive to the fact that your body has natural needs but also my spirit has spiritual needs and I got to pull away and have time for God with respect to that so it's truly a balancing scenario across the border I see I got you cool Uh, just give us a quick rundown of some of your you know current uh, projects that you're working on your artists that you're working with that kind of thing Gary you forgot to ask me about my how I balance my 10 children (laughs) you know I had to go there right No, I got spiritual kids, Gary. (laughs) But if I had 10 of them, I'm sure God would balance those also. But you said for me to give you a rundown of the things uh, that God is. Different artists that you work with. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I bought some little CDs here. Always trying to push somebody else and just pour into them because God opens up doors when you rejoice and you get happy about other people's success. Um, Well, I could tell you some of the people I worked with, still working with, and who God is going to have me working with. How about that, Gary? I have been blessed to be able to work with Bishop T.D. Jace. I did his publicity with Woman Thou Art Loose with a a gentleman by the name of Bill Carpenter. Uh, We did that book and then also... We did the play. I worked as a promoter of the play, Bishop Eddie Long. I did marketing and promotions for Tyler Perry with Medea's family and some of his other plays. I worked with David and Tamala Mann. I was marketing and promotional director for that last CD that Tamala had when she won all those Stellas last year. And this whitehead lady was working with Tamala. And uh, I work with people like C.C. Winans, Angie and Debbie Winans, Ron Cannoli. I mean, the list goes on. Marvin Sapp. I have worked in some capacity with these people. I'm presently working with Dietrich Haddon. D.D. in the, his house. Talk to him on the way here. Demita with the hot song, No Looking Back. My girl, Cynthia Jones with the big hair. She's not the only one that like big hair. <laughs> okay. and, um, and then Shekinah glory oh my god let me tell you something when i started working with them they said do not put on the contracts artists we are not artists we are ministers and i said you know what i love y'all already i mean because they are worshipers and they love god and uh so i managed them work with them and also vashon mitchell and there's a host of a lot of times record companies will call me and hire me and say, can you do the radio track and can you put a marketing plan together or can you put a tour together? Presently right now, I'm working on a huge concert with Fred Hammond, Mary Mary, Jay Moss and Donnie McClurkin, in which I have been the one to spearhead the marketing and promotions and everything is over 10,000 people. And the promoters and I are going to be doing a series of concerts with various artists across the country. Cool, cool, cool. Because when it comes to gospel music and stuff this day and time, we, as we know, everything is steadily changing ever since Kurt broke out with, you know, his big hits. You know, I guess uh, for you to just come in and basically be able to take something like that to the R&B market, do you, do you see that being there or something that is possible? 
Well, I'm glad you asked me about that because you don't know this about me, Gary. I used to work secular. I worked with Outkast, Wu-Tang, Roots. I even worked with